Dear Lord Bletto, you are amazing. Hey there everyone, I'm Lin Lin, and welcome back to the show that just doesn't end. If you have been watching my content for a while, there is a pretty good chance that you found me through my first Kai Weiss video. And to all of you that have, I would like to make something very clear. I am very sorry. That video was immensely mid. The points I made, while correct for the most part, were painfully surface level when tackling the subjects that did, and the audio of the video is disgusting to listen to. These factors have left me wanting to remake the video for a while, as I hinted towards in my 1k subscriber special. And as for my least favourite one, that would probably go to my first video on Kai Weiss actually. Not because the points in it were poor, but more so because of how a lot of them were a lot more surface level than they really could have and should have been. Not to mention that I didn't have my pop filter at the time, so the audio is frankly really hard to listen to. So much so that I really would not be surprised if I go on to remake this video from scratch at some point. And the business. We call this foreshadowing. And since then, I have been rather swamped with high workload projects, so I might as well make this video now, or at the very least start working on it, as of the 30th of October 2022. So hold on to your butts, people. We are going to go all the way back and document absolutely everything we can in regards to Kai Weiss to the best of my ability, as a formal apology to all of you guys for having to put up with my older videos when I couldn't edit to save my life, which I mean, I still can't really, but you get the point. And given that I use information information from the past, I would like to make it clear that such isn't the overall main point of this video. I'm not just here to expose how bad these actions are, as I am confident enough in you guys that you don't need to be patronised while having something explained to you that you probably already know. The reason I am criticising them is because of how they show that the pretty dodgy behaviours that I will be criticising are something that Kai has shown very little to suggest growing from, despite how much I've seen the oh hey they can change cope thrown out over and over and over. So I hope you're ready for the biggest dive ever, because we are going to be diving into this massive archive to provide as close to a perfect collection as I can of the problematic behaviours of Kai Weiss. Let's get into it. Now, Kai Weiss was quite the influential member of the commentary community for quite a long time, and because of that, the history of things to criticise goes back quite far. So far, in fact, that it dates back all the way to the eternal drama, otherwise known as the Toby drama. A situation where Kai was in the right for the most part, actually. Toby did indeed have a lot worth criticising due to the way that they had taken a very hypocritical stance to call someone else a predator, <laughs> and the way that they had responded to criticism on the matter was also pretty mid. Therefore, it should be made clear that my coverage of Kai's actions during the Toby drama is in no way a defense of Toby. I know that should go without saying, but I'm frankly so done with the if you're not with me, you're my enemy mindset online, because it's a bogus argument that serves no purpose but murking waters. Anyways, Kai was actually quite the contender for the most involved person within that drama, and their actions during it are pretty dodgy to say the least. The first video they made about Toby was actually pretty decent for the most part, but that is to say that I don't have a few things to say about it. Firstly, Kai introduces the video by saying the following. Now, for the fault. Recently, she uploaded a video that she soon took down, but I don't believe that she learned anything from it. Like, I actually preserved the video because I wanted to do a critique and response on it. So here's the video in question. You throw out the notion that Toby had taken the video down without learning anything. How do you infer that exactly? Is it because of how fast the video was taken down? In that case, perhaps one of her friends had seen the video, let her know the problems with it, and she acted accordingly. There is no way to definitively know that Toby had taken the video down without learning why it was a problematic video. Without going full Matrix Hackerman and seeing into the mind of someone, there isn't really much of a way to know that. That is, without a confession of such, but you don't seem to supply that. And you may point out that Kai had specifically said that they didn't think that Toby learned, and such isn't on the same level as definitive saying that she didn't learn. And while that may be the case, there wasn't really anything that Kai had called out in this video that would reasonably lead someone to that conclusion. This is, by all accounts, an assumption that has no concrete basis. Get real. However, the main problem that I have with this video is the way that it draws Toby as a hypocrite for taking issue with drama channels when her claim to fame was releasing a video talking about creep show art. I don't talk about a lot of this stuff. I don't talk about a lot of these people because besides her creep show video, a lot of the things that I like to talk to when I am hyper criticizing something, it's more picking it apart for fun and roasting. It's not like, how dare this person do this? Oh my God, this fucking tweet that they made. Oh my God. Like, no, that's so fucking time consuming and it doesn't 
matter. It does not fucking matter. You need to sit down and realize what's actually fucking important and what's not. Oh no, you don't just get to skim over your creep show art video and say that it's just for fun. You spent over half an hour picking apart and talking about the problems with her content. You don't critique and rip someone apart for fun. You do it because you want to see them get better. If this is just some fun pastime for you, then you're not critiquing anyone. You're hating on them and bullying. That video in specific literally tears apart your argument here. You can't put drama channels on blast for being hypercritical, then do the exact same thing to Shannon. What about Shannon being problematic is so important that it made you make a half hour video on it? What about her actions really matter that makes it different from drama channels? Not only that, but you sit here and get mad about tweets when you did the exact same thing to Shannon. Trust me, there are tweets that I've wanted to reply to, mostly including the one that you retweeted of my tweet. Oh, there's so many of those tweets that I just want to just fucking pop off. Whatever reasoning you have for making your video on Shannon can be applied to literally every drama video that you hate so much. While I do agree that Toby taking issue with people discussing tweets is pretty silly, as she has done so in the past as well, the thing that I think is most important to note here is that overall, trying to use Toby's creep show video as an instance of hypocrisy on her end, while sounding fine on paper, doesn't actually hold up all too well because it's a little more complicated than that. And this is where the bigger issue of all this lies with how she's been behaving and how she's been acting on social media and on her channel within the past couple of months. Her content and how she behaves and reacts to people online has increasingly gotten more defensive, more childish, more petty, and significantly more emotionally driven without any control over what she says or what she does. And it's extremely negligent and it's not okay. Every single comment you don't like, you don't need to respond. You need to learn when to leave things alone and when things need to be addressed. You have a very impressionable audience, Shannon. And what you say and how you react to things does matter. You also need to start scripting your videos and take more time for them to come out, not just popping one out every other day. Now, do I hate her? Do I hate Shannon? Of course not. Yes, your behavior, Shannon, as of lately, has extremely angered me and is uh, makes me very disappointed in you and concerned. But while yes, some of the topics that you've been talking about of recently have definitely pushed you into a place where you go over the line and you get very emotional and you get very defensive and to almost a stance of being a kind of a bully, you do care about what you talk about. You care about people getting justice. You don't like when the underdog is kicked around just like all of us do, but it's genuine when it comes from you. You were also so fucking good to your fans. You show your gratitude for them all the time and they deserve better. And I know you can do better than this, Shannon. Remember that girl who was living out of her car with like little to no resources to make videos? Remember what you did, what you had to do in order to get by with like a $2 pen and a fucking sketchbook from Walmart? I don't know where the hell she went because all I see now is somebody who does no research. Are we gonna continue to insult them or are we going to try to educate and make them understand that not vaccinating your kids is wrong? It's a wrong thing to do. Gets extremely defensive to people who don't agree with her and makes really petty tweets from a petty situation as her Twitter banner, like a 12 year old would do. You are so sweet and talented and creative and whether you like it or not a very large amount of people look up to you and you need to realize that you are a role model you need to be a better role model because right now I don't see that. Toby had seemingly made her video on Creep Show because she actively liked her at the time and saw her as someone who had made a few mistakes. Toby had a lot of respect for Shannon due to a variety of reasons and simply wanted Shannon to realize her mistakes and to adjust accordingly, as she had seemingly lost what Toby thought was good about her content. Why is this important? Well, that would be because Toby could, with nuance, explain why she viewed her criticism of Creep Show art to be different from these drama channels that she speaks of. Maybe she viewed her intent to be different from the intent of the drama channels. Maybe she just thought that her criticism was more relevant to current conversation or more valid overall. My point here is that there is potential space for extra nuance to this that you seem to even question the existence of. You can't put drama channels on blast for being hypercritical, then do the exact same thing to Shannon. What about Shannon being problematic is so important that it made you make a half hour video on it? 
What about her actions really matter that makes it different from drama channels? This heavily implies that circumstances surrounding Toby's video on Shannon are identical to that of the drama channels that she talks about. When the commentary that Toby was providing in that video was so vague that there is space for potential nuance here, and that is something that you need to throw out if you want to use this as an example of hypocrisy. However, the part of this video that I find to be the most tasteless would be this part. Alright, sorry about the echo. I'm downstairs. I'm not going far into this because I literally do not have the mental energy to push myself through this entire- just- it's such dumb bullshit. I'm sorry. I- I can't- I have things that are severely more fucking important than this dumb bullshit. First, I'm blocking several drama channels. Well, every drama channel and several commentary channels because I fucking had it. I've had it. I've reached uh, at this point for a while now. I've tried my best to keep my mouth shut about several topics, but I'm fucking done. I'm fucking done. Okay, so right off the bat, relax. You're way too angry about drama channels, and though blocking all of them is your prerogative, chill out. Nothing happening on the internet is worth getting this upset over. Yeah, that's just kind of yikes. This whole nothing happening on the internet is worth getting this upset over point is tasteless to put it nicely. You don't have much of a right to police emotions and say that people shouldn't get this upset about online happenings outright. What if an online situation is something very distressing to a person in question for whatever reason? Which, based on Toby's tone in the recording you show, I can assume might actually be the case for her here. TLDR, you are telling someone who seems to be very distressed by something that it ain't worth getting that upset over, when at the end of the day, that's Toby's problem prerogative, not yours. To conclude my thoughts on this video, while it did make a few solid points here and there, there were points where it felt that Kai had to reach a bit to make an argument, in one case ignoring potential nuance where there was space for it, and in another case, picking an unnecessarily uncharitable interpretation when they had no actual concrete basis they provide for that interpretation. Anyways, this video was only the first video that Kai made regarding Toby. After working with Omnia on a video on their channel about Toby, a few altercations occurred on Twitter and Kai decided to talk about that in another Another video. This video also brings up some good points, but that isn't really going to devalue the bad ones here once again. For starters, the way that Kai responds to one of Toby's claims about Omnia leaves a lot to be desired. Let's talk about your next point, where you claim that Omnia publicly posted about a story that you wanted to keep private. Omnia has since blurred the story out due to this claim. Good on her, it wasn't her story to tell. But if this supposed story was so private, why did you talk about it to a stranger on the internet within days of talking to them? You two aren't friends. You never were friends. So I find it funny that you say she went behind your back when you two were never friends in the first place. Even the DM conversation that you have with one another, you two might have been friendly, but you weren't friends. Not only that, but the story was not in either one of our videos nor didn't have anything to do with them. No one would have even known about it or the DMs if you didn't lie and claim that Omnia twisted everything and cut the DMs up. This whole situation has nothing to do with that story at all, but you went grasping for straws and took the first thing that you could blow out of proportion and fish for pity for. I don't know about you, but this feels kind of victim blamey to me. At the end of the day, Toby is able to speak about something in DMs without it therefore being okay for the other person she is conversing with to speak about it publicly. And whether Toby really was friends or just friendly with Omnia is irrelevant. All that this really shows is that Toby has different places that her boundaries surrounding this were than you may have anticipated. And you saying that this wouldn't have happened if Toby never claimed Omnia was cutting DMs, while technically is true, doesn't really matter either. At the end of the day, the responsibility was on Omnia to at least blur that story out before posting their DMs publicly. So why are you making the claim that this only happened so that Omnia could put the lies to rest? They didn't need to keep that story uncensored to disprove the falsehoods, and even if they did, you don't clarify as much. TLDR, you are ultimately trying to slyly shift blame for what Omnia did wrong onto Toby when the reason you gave for Omnia to take the action they did does not need them to do what Toby was upset about them for. But wait, there's more. Responding to Toby wasn't the only thing here. Kai also wanted to respond to both Mad Libs and Nezzy Monster as they had both tweeted about the topic. The Mad Libs section is one I don't really have much to say on, to be honest, but I do want to go over the part on Nezzy. Last person I want to touch on is Nezzy, then I'm done. I got to talk with Nezzy briefly after they clarified to me that Liv's video and tweet was not on Omnia. I held that L and expressed that I appreciated the clarification. Nezzy went on to go to Toby's tweet and say this, pull the madame? 
Are we forgetting that your friend here literally went on her sex work account to blackmail someone to keep their mouth shut before she dragged them into a video, then got mad that the account was leaked when she herself leaked it? The exact same thing is happening now, but now she's claiming that Omnia leaked her personal story and racism opinions when she went on the record to speak on them herself. Don't lie and publicly claim that someone cut up DMs, then get mad when they provide the public with the full content. Context. I went on to criticize Nezi for pushing this she leaked the story narrative and they went on to say this and again I'm not trusting a complete stranger on the internet with personal information. The real abuse of trust is sitting here lying on someone when you know fully well that they did not do a single thing that you claimed. Now, I would like to clarify that the comparison to Madame that Nezi had made there was taking things a bit too far. Nezi did do a naughty there, I will give you that. However, that doesn't mean that you can just disregard when Nezi had afterwards correctly pointed out that what Omnia had done was a breach of trust. Whether Toby should have had that level of trust Omnia or not is something that you seem to be able to argue about until the cows come home. But whether Toby should have trusted Omnia or not doesn't matter because the fact of the case is that she did. And breaching trust is not suddenly made excusable if that trust was placed poorly. Something that it would need to be for it to be a valid argument for you to talk about Toby being too trusting as if that helps Omnia's case here when it really doesn't. Not to mention how I'm not too fond of how near the start of that clip there you rambled on about Toby's actions towards Trent. While I agree that Toby was in the wrong for those actions, those actions are not the topic of conversation at this stage. I struggle to see what it adds to bring those actions up here. If you wanted to call out Toby on that, then go for it, as again, Toby was being pretty scummy to put it nicely there. But that is not to say that you should go about it by bringing them up in a completely unrelated conversation that mentioning this adds nothing to. And given how much mental gymnastics you performed earlier to rush to Omnia's defense, you don't really have much ground to stand on in terms of saying that Nezi was pushing a narrative. She was ultimately calling things as she saw them, while being overly hyperbolic in the process, unfortunately. Whereas, you had effectively dropped the blame for what Omnia had done on the feet of Toby when there wasn't much reason to do so. If anyone is pushing a narrative here, it's you. Because at the end of the day, Nezi didn't need to shift blame for no good reason to make her logic work. Kai would continue to be in another video with Omnia after Toby had made her response, but that video isn't really one I have all too much to say about, to be honest. And you may think that I will therefore be ending this chapter here, but not quite, because after a YouTuber called Harsh Opinions had made her own video on the topic, I had clapped back with one of their own. And overall, I don't have much to say about this one either, with the exception of this one part. I really don't want to get into the topic of the race comments, because that's a whole other can of worms that really didn't need to be fucking open. Okay, first off, yikes. Second, you're right, Toby isn't a mind reader, but neither is Omnia. Also, Notice how both of us are speaking on their behalves right now? Just wanted to point that out. Omnia may have consented to the conversation, but she could not have expected Toby to go on a rant about racism versus racial insensitivity. Also, a can of worms that didn't need to be fucking opened? You're a white woman. Who are you to say that? That can of worms is open for me and Omnia both every day of our lives as black people. If that BLM in your Twitter name meant anything, you would know how foolish it is to say this. Fun. While I will concede to the fact that calling this a can of worms was not the best move on Harsha's side, implying that doing so means that the support for BLM in her Twitter name means nothing is a bit of a stretch that is really towing the line in terms of just being an ad hominem attack. And on that note, we should be about done with this part. The Toby drama is something that I have discussed on its own in the past anyways, so I'm not going to get into more of it than this video needs me to. Instead, we are going to go over a situation that was part of the aftermath of the Toby drama, a little thing we call the Hopeless Peaches drama. And what did Kai do there? Well, let's talk about it. Given how significant the Toby drama was in the grand scheme of the commentary community, in combination with some of the individuals during it acting in what seems to be rather bad faith, it was only natural that the aftermath of it had the potential to be just as harmful. And unfortunately, it led to a situation that was significantly worse. Meet Hopeless Peaches, another artist slash commentary channel who had made a few remarks about the Toby situation in comment sections and on Twitter, but nothing that was too significant to the situation itself. And it overall would have stayed 
that way if it wasn't for a certain individual called Prison Mate Luke, a commentator who had a lot of influence within the community at the time for some reason. Luke had gone on to make a third video about the Toby situation that kickstarted this whole mess by making this remark about Peaches. And another person who commented was Hopeless Peaches, who also decided to put herself into the drama despite constantly saying how she doesn't want to be in it and would just never leave it alone. And when people like Thumbin called her out for a terrible and biased behavior, she made a community post about how she wasn't friends with Toby, which I didn't actually know she wasn't friends with Toby because she did everything in her power to defend her and fail to fight Omnia so much that I thought she was. Because why go through all that hassle for someone you apparently don't even care about? Well, you say how you're going to be taking a break from the drama and comments and all that, which is fine. If you need a break, you need one. I'm not saying you don't have mental health problems, but you would constantly come back to post more things than beg for sympathy. And when you were getting genuine criticism for all the garbage you've done, you decided to bait your audience, going off the grid for hours to make your audience worry that you hurt or yourself. And guess what, two days later you were back to making tweets again. And she's been doing this for a long time, it's very manipulative, and she's always using her mental health as a pity me card, which is funny since she called out Toby for doing the same thing. Yeah, the tastelessness of Luke doing this should not be something that I have to go over today, especially with the other people who have talked about the Peaches drama. But it is important context, as Peaches had gone on to make this statement about the reaction to what Luke was trying to criticize there, a statement that we will get back to shortly. At which point, Luke had gone on to make another video on the matter that, to put things briefly, as this video isn't about Luke, dragged the feet of Luke's position by presenting Peach's position dishonestly in a number of ways that you can learn more about by watching Jar's video about Luke. However, the holes in Luke's position were rather vast and in hindsight, are brutally silly. Now before Peach's or anyone else says that I'm faking these or something else stupid, I got these from the lady herself, Creepshow. So don't try and say these are fake. Because Creepshow fart is just seeping with credibility, I'm sure. And despite all of this, it was a springboard that began the Peaches drama, something that Kai would end up fueling, adding extra fuel to the fire that really didn't need to be there for the most part. And in turn, they ended up making some arguments that are rather dodgy. Kai had made this video to talk about the experiences that multiple people alleged to have had with Peaches. And while I won't be going over the entirety of this video, as the Peaches drama is something that I probably will talk about in more depth another time, I will talk about a couple of parts of the video. The first part I wanted to go over was this section of Kai's video where they talk about Avrona, a tech review YouTuber who had some beef with Peaches after disagreements that they had along with a video Peaches made about him. The thing about this section that bugs me is the way that it talks about that video that Peaches had made. Not only that, but despite making it a point to not mention his name in your video, you still put his name in the tags, as well as Big Joel's name, meaning anyone can find out who this video is about if they look hard enough including me. You also turned comments off for this video, and given the recent circumstances, I hope you understand how that might look to people. At the end of the day, this feels like reaching a little bit. The tags that a YouTuber uses in their videos are only a problem if they are either misleading or insensitive in some way. And realistically, given how the tags are not something that users of YouTube can actually see if they do not have a plugin that allows them to do so, I guess it doesn't stop people from finding out. But at the end of the day, this is just so petty. It is making a big deal out of something that you really don't need to. If Peaches had told people to check the tags to find out what the video was really about, something that you do not show her doing, then maybe you would have some sort of case here. But as things stand, this really is a bit of a grasp at what few straws you have here. However, the more important part of this would be where Kai talks about Peaches responding to criticism on that video about Avrona. Peaches actually responded to Avrona in her own comment to break down some of his points. And though it's a decent comment, I do have this to say. Peaches, you can't exaggerate a story about somebody else for comedy, especially if the person you're exaggerating isn't laughing with you. That's where Avrona's problem lies. You also can't call him things like the craziest small YouTuber when the guy is anything but crazy and also doesn't appreciate you calling him that. If you didn't think he's a bad guy, then maybe not title your video this? This seems to also have had the same problem as the tag segment, as it too is excessively petty. But not only that, it ignores the fact that hyperbole is something that someone is perfectly allowed to find humorous. Avrona didn't appreciate being referred to as the craziest small YouTuber, and he isn't obligated to appreciate that. But that being said, it isn't something that was actually that serious of a claim, because YouTubers using hyperbolic titles has been a thing since the days of the chinless emo. It 
it really isn't that much of a problem. In short, these problems are very minute in practice, and placing them alongside other problems that people had with peaches that, valid or not, are significantly more serious is a little bit dodgy. It's a bit odd that a video that goes over someone allegedly using their mental health as a get out of jail free card is also talking about her very trivial spats with another creator when said spat really doesn't matter all too much in the grand scheme of things here. Oh yeah, and the video also goes over some of the points that prison mate Luke had made about Peaches, and that was the worst part of this. I'm going to keep this short and sweet because currently Luke has two videos where he goes over this specific situation with Peaches, but the gist of it was that after Jar made his video on me and Omnia, Luke responded to that video and called Peaches out on her behavior as well as specifically calling her out for making a tweet that could have been perceived as Luke definitively calls it such. Peaches soon spun this and made this comment regarding what Luke said. Yeah, I won't lie. To have a channel bigger than me with such a popular video, with so many people attacking my character, or just me outright because I didn't die, it's like the whole world is saying that I should have. Okay, Peaches, this is disgusting. The literal meaning of baiting is to use to gain someone's attention or pity. It literally stops there. Based on what Luke has seen you do now and in the past, that is the conclusion he came to. Never did he wish that you would die, but he did find it disgusting that you would concern your audience the way that you did. And I find it disgusting that you would even put that evil on someone else. Peaches, this is a pattern, and I mean this in the kindest way possible. Please stop tweeting. Just stop. And again, I want to say this in the kindest way possible too, running your mouth. You tweet way too much and start sympathy seeking when you can't handle the pressure that you threw onto yourself. If you're going to run your mouth, run it, but stop running it about other people and other creators because they are going to notice and call you out for it. The amount of tweets, subtweets, and comments that you have made not only about the Toby drama, but me, Omnia, Luke, and who I'll soon get into, Thuman has been ridiculous. Not only that, but even in the past when you had a much smaller audience, you made a post similar to the tweets that Luke called you out for that said this. This is probably going to be my last post, so goodbye to everyone who has been kind to me. I'm not really good with words, so yeah. Peaches, I'm not going to doubt that you deal with mental problems. I never will. But this is a pattern, and messages like this make people extremely concerned for you. If you're going to say something like this, even back then, you need to realize that there is a problem and seek professional help. And if being online is perpetuating your depressive moods, try to take the steps needed to detach yourself from it. Because even after you posted this on Tumblr, you went back to posting normally like you usually do, as if you didn't just put that blog out there. You also made a tweet thread on Twitter that you soon deleted where you started talking about how you relapsed into self here is the tweet you made after you deleted it, and this is yet another sign that you need to get help, and I genuinely hope you do. Okay, the biggest problem with this, of course, is Kai giving their platform and credibility to Luke's claims. If we take a look at the comment that Kai had used there, we will see that Peaches didn't say that Luke wanted her game ended at all. Yeah, I won't lie. To have a channel bigger than me with such a popular video, with so many people attacking my character, just me outright, because I didn't die? It's like the whole world is saying I should have. Peaches was pointing out the fact that the only reason she is being called a liar was her attempt on her life not working, and that if it played out differently, these comments about her would not have been made. Don't argue against things that Peaches didn't say, Kai. The part that uses the Tumblr post that Peaches used was also just as bad, because it was being used to establish a pattern of Peaches pulling the mental health card. And if we go back and find the date that this post was made, we will see that it was made in November 2018. You are very much scraping the bottom of the barrel to throw whatever you can at the wall when you are trying to establish a pattern of behavior using at most two examples that occurred over the span of two years. And not only that, but neither of those examples actually prove what you pass them off as proving. We have already debunked the one from Luke, but the one you brought to the table here doesn't actually substantiate that Peaches has a history of using the mental health card to seek sympathy from criticism, because you don't show this screenshot alongside 
wide criticism that Peaches was receiving at the time. So not only do you pass off two examples over two years as a pattern when it really isn't, but even if such a small collective of data was able to be seen as a pattern, you fail to prove how your evidence was able to prove what you tried to claim it proved. Is this how desperate you are to prove that Peaches is a sympathy seeker? Because it's honestly kind of pathetic at this point. And this is why this part of Kai's video bothers me as much as it does. They're accepting arguments that are at best uncharitable and at worst dishonest. And not only that, but actively digging through old posts from Peaches in order to try to find anything to label it as a pattern of behavior when it simply isn't. You not only perpetuate arguments that you should have had the objectivity to see were tasteless, but actively fuel them and give credibility to them with not only your platform, but with evidence that doesn't really hold up all too well. And the worst part of all this is that making the claims here was only half the story. Quite a few people who did screw up alongside Kai during the Peaches drama would apologize accordingly. Did Kai do that? What do you think? I don't need to work on anything. I'm perfectly capable of admitting I'm wrong. I just didn't do anything wrong in that drama. And I'm very right in saying that. I genuinely don't care that you are not on my side. Your opinion is not valued whatsoever. Lemfow. I'm not apologizing to anyone or anything. I'm setting that straight right now. If you can't understand Omnia and I's explanations, or our words, then I have nothing to tell you. Racism, harassment, and attacks don't make me do what you want. I'm standing my ground. I have nothing I need to apologize for. If y'all didn't get it, that's you. And y'all really let this say, you didn't say you agreed with them, but you agreed. I don't even have to illustrate how dumb that point is. Y'all give the most weird motherfuckers credibility for no reason. Wow, really? It's almost like it was completely unnecessary that Omnia needed a section and a twit longer. Two videos and Discord shit talk to settle something as baseless as a thumbnail you two had double standards for. There was nothing either of us needed to apologize for. Um, no, it isn't. If I said she was a super... I would have said so, Scritus. I literally said in my video, I think she's a sympathy seeker, not that she is one. That is my opinion. I never stated as fact. Same with this thumbnail mess. You should have publicly denounced Luke's claims. Bro, why? We are not Luke. We never agreed, and y'all try so hard to say that we did, or find some way to say that we did. It was you fools who made the narrative that we agreed, then got mad when we said otherwise. What a joke. Y'all really let Peaches claim we supported Luke. We are friends with him, and Shannon, we're ableist, and especially let her claim I said she faked her super tendencies and not a single one of you asked for proof if your goofy ass really expects me to apologize slash take critique for claims that never even came out of my mouth in the first place you really got a screw loose take that shit up with luke and shannon fuck do their claims have to do with what i said on my channel is this really how hard you are going to drag your feet kai it's frankly embarrassing. The most embarrassing part, though, would be the way that Kai seemed to act like they never supported Luke's claims, when you literally did, mate. Yes, Kai did downgrade their argument from self-deletion beta to sympathy seeker, but even with that change in wording, both Kai and Luke were pretty much making the same point anyway, that Peaches was using her mental health as a get-out-of-jail-free card when she was getting criticized. You can sugarcoat it and change the wording all you want, but that doesn't change the fact that you are making the same point as Luke and supporting his claims in turn. But if you think that lying about one's own actions to try and soften claims made against them was as bad as this was going to get, then you're unfortunately very naive. Because it's about to get a lot worse. Nah, after that shit, I officially cannot stand this community. Oh my god, you cannot make this shit up. This is like telling a victim they had it coming because they dressed the way they wanted to. Maybe check the instead? I and before Peaches says I compared her actions to with this analogy. I cannot believe this bullshit. This is so fucking stupid. I can't do this with you people anymore. I'm so sick. The facts can be right in front of you and it's still not enough. Wow. 
So you compare the situation to that of our word. I have no words for you. And you may say in retort to this that Kai was just comparing logic, right? When not only did they not need to bring such sensitive connotations to the conversation in order to do that, but if that was what they were trying to do, then why would they say that they didn't outright compare them and say nothing to back it up after sounding like they were going to do that? But maybe this was just an impulsive decision on Kai's part, right? Well, no. They then went on to defend this action to the hilt and not only that, but laughing at people when they took it seriously. Yeah, I'm really not. I didn't know I was so powerful to give trauma to strangers on the internet. <laughs> I'd cancel me too if I thought like this. <laughs> Damn, there's still water in this jar? Incredible. Cause yeah, comparing Peach's actions to that of our word apology at best and straight up our word at worst definitely wouldn't be something that you should have had the common sense to know not to do. And you really have some nerve if you want to laugh at people for having issue with your actions here. And given how much you would constantly double down on that, of course people are gonna still have an issue with those actions. You weren't listening. Just wanted to throw in a little editor's note here after realizing that I almost missed something. If you want to throw out the argument that the Peaches situation was ages ago now, while that is the case, I don't think it particularly matters here. I still find it to be a valid thing to bring up against Kai because of how this throw was made in February of 2022. I really don't condone this statement at all, and I hope it's the last time I speak on this. The most I have done in your drama was gather your public Discord messages for Omnia's video. That's it. They weren't DMs. They were just public messages. If y'all are allowed to compile all my tweets and make memes and shit about my public statements, I can do the same to you. Not that I did. I simply criticized. Thuman, Omnia, Shannon, and Luke were bigger players in that game than I ever was. If you want to know how people got a hold of the toasty shit, or the private server mess, or anything personal, do not look in my direction. I don't know anything, and haven't for a minute now. Gross that none of these people can admit to being shitty on their own volition, and have to put their own wrongful doings on me because I'm getting backlash. I made two Peaches videos. Two! The first literally summarize what everyone else said. The second was to dispel misinformation. I featured tons of creators and got many statements, all contained in that video. Only thing I changed is the race section. That should have been its own separate beast, and so should the section on Harley. Other than that, I stand by him, but I don't care to have him up. It's dead. I get being a victim in commentary as like striking gold in a mine, and trust me, it works. But that's not stalking. You said it yourself. It's valid to discuss tweets. Same goes for public Discord messages. Drop the other names. These aren't my actions. I'm done taking the fall and writing for those fake ass Dude, I'll own up to whatever, but I'm not holding anyone else's bullshit. I don't like you, Rosie, but I wasn't the one who wanted you to lose your platform. I have enough decency to dead that shit when it boils. This is why I stopped Nia and Thuman, axed Luke from my video, and even condemned Shannon. The only people to blame for this drama going as long as it did is your fans who wouldn't shut up about it. You who did the same, and us who responded to it all. At this point, I'm letting everything rock. Where they try and shift blame onto Luke, Shannon, and Omnia for the Peaches drama to downplay their involvement. At the end of the day, you had a hand to play in this drama, Kai. And people are more than within their right to criticize you for that. Not only because of the actions alone, but also because of how you actively drag your feet on them as you continue to do so here. Even if we do accept your premise that Luke and co were more involved than you were, that still doesn't change the fact that you gave credibility to Luke's bogus arguments, lied about ever doing that, and actively told everyone that you wouldn't apologize for the hand you played. Now, Kai had made a second video on Peaches, but that one isn't really one I'm going to go into that much. If I did, I would just be repeating myself a lot for the most part, but you are going to need to remember that it existed. It will be important in a bit. And now we will be moving on from this drama now that the bots have probably demonetized me at this point and I won't make a penny from this video. That being said, we now arrive at where tides start to turn.
Meet Akumu, a YouTuber who is basically hated by everyone, as any transphobe should be as far as I'm concerned. Either way, Akumu had been messing with Kai on Twitter for quite a while, and Kai had in turn made a video about that. For the most part, it wasn't too bad. Contender for one of the better videos that Kai had made, to be honest. It wasn't perfect by any means, but it is an instance where saying that someone has an addiction to conflict with you actually works, because Akumu actually had made note that Kai was someone who was just easy to mess with and get a reaction out of. Either way, Akumu had then made a response video to Kai's video, and instead of having an actual conversation about the matter, Kai had hit the video with a copyright strike. And on that note, I do feel it is important to go over Kai's tweets about the situation. They made quite a few to try to make their case, so let's hear them out. Maybe they will be able to make a solid case for themselves. Now, it is important to note that I got all of these tweets from a certain stream that we will talk about in a second, and that is why the time zones would apply to an Australian Twitter user. And on that note, it's highly likely that there were more tweets about the situation that Kai had made, but given how frequently they delete and reactivate their Twitter, this is all I can get my hands on. But even then, that's still enough for me to make the arguments I wanted to, so here we go. I don't know why you're acting like he didn't have this coming. It's all lols and trolls until his video gets strikes, la malfoul. Being a general piece of shit and fucking with me and Nia for the sake of it ain't so funny anymore when it happens to you. Okumu can re-upload. I'm not lifting it. I would like to point out that you don't need to have little care for Okumu's actions that pushed Kai to that choice in order to take issue with Kai's choice. To draw the line in the sand now, if I hadn't clearly done that enough for you, Akumu had been an active thorn in Kai's side, that's fair enough. However, the reason that people hadn't done anything is not only because you had already done so on your own, but also because of how people may be concerned about the Streisand effect, thinking that it would have just made the problem worse or that they would be speaking over you. My point here is that the more charitable interpretation you seem to miss here is not because they didn't have a problem with Akumu, but instead that they simply didn't want to make the problem worse. And on that note, I struggle to see why in this middle part here, you put what Akumu did and what you did back on equal grounds. And given the size that your platform was at this time, your poor actions going unchallenged could have set a precedent forth that doing so is okay when it just isn't. All this being said, and Twitter spats aside, I'm not removing the strike. Seeing Akuma and Cole mode about it is death entertaining. You got that smoke you ordered. So at this point, Kai had been arguing with a few other people a bit and is still sticking to their position. Cool. While also doing so in a way that devalues the criticism to just people molding, while also seeming to make it look like people were actively siding with Akumu by calling your critics Akumu and Co, when again, you don't need to side with Akumu in any way to criticize your actions here. Hi, that's, uh, illegal? So is harassment, but that's hush hush until someone gets striked. I just love how in response to your actions being called illegal, you don't actually say that they aren't, but instead say that Akumu's actions were too, because two wrongs apparently do make a right now. I'm set on my decision. I sort of found an issue with something else I did slash said anyway. I'm not sorry about it. Feel free to unfollow, I won't hold you. I hope no one else has to deal with that nuisance on the level I did anyways. So not only are you still bringing up Akumu's actions when they just aren't relevant here, but you double down harder by implying that this was just what people found to force out a problem to have with you. That just isn't the case, Kai. If the size of the platforms of both you and your closest ally at the time are anything to go by, then people loved you. People just hating you for no reason is, for lack of a better term, seemingly the self-victimizing delusion you have to put the logical wall there so that you don't have to concede that you did anything wrong. Something that will become a rather common theme throughout the rest of this chapter and this video in general. You got a copyright strike. Suck it up. Hope anyone else you've given a hard time to does the same. I feel for anyone else but you in this situation, Lamalfell. I don't mind the backlash. You are that annoying slash full of it. I'm happy this happened to you. Casually just gloating at the person you screwed over in a way where you say that you hope that other people Akumu had been a menace to does the same thing, without making any indication that they would also have needed to have their copyright infringed at the very least. Akumu fucks with me and it's entertainment, but the moment I fuck with him, I'm reprimanded. You literally cannot make this shit up. Um, no. First of all, I don't know who was calling Akumu's actions entertainment, and secondly, 
yeah, you are reprimanded because your action was bad and calling it out accordingly isn't almost guaranteed to make the problem worse. Stop putting your actions on equal footing with Akumu's actions when they are in no way comparable, and this ultimately is a tactic that you wouldn't need to resort to if you were able to make an argument. Bro, just man up. Stop pretending everyone is against you for no reason and accept that you literally violated the one generally agreed upon rule of commentary. Then tell me the valid criticism, Harley. This video was so bad, YouTube itself notified me of it. Tell me what valid criticism was and back it up. Otherwise, I'm geek. Never been notified of a single video on me, but this one. It was that bad, but would love to hear a point that can't easily be debunked. First of all, whether Akumu's video on you had valid criticism or not isn't really relevant to whether or not copyright striking it is okay. That's not how copyright works. Secondly, Kai is referring to the YouTube copyright match tool. When to put it simply, the YouTube copyright match tool simply cannot be taken at its word as to what makes a video fair use. This is because the way it works is by using bots that scan the video and looks for places where the video used content that was uploaded to your channel first. If it does find that, it sends you a YouTube notification to let you choose where to take it from there. The problem with this system is that, as a YouTube bot, it can't really tell what context the content was used in, something that makes its judgement alone worth next to nothing when determining if a video is fair use or not. For you to argue otherwise heavily suggests that you don't understand how the system works. And if I may put things bluntly here, the cheek of implying that all of Harley's points were easily debunked is absolutely insufferable from the likes of you. It really is one of those cases where I am just able to throw a no you in your face and it actually ends up working. I don't give a shit if his video was good lol, I give a shit about the fact that you broke the law and took it down. Get a life, homie. And I rest my case. You are making it hard for me to take this video seriously at this point. So Harley points out that you bringing up an irrelevant point doesn't help your case, and your response is just to say that you rest your case. Rest what case? What argument do you think you've won here? This is what you consider a re-upload of your content? Look how much editing there is, lol. Stop lying. No one said it was a re-upload. It's not transformative, and neither is it fair use. These are gargantuan gaps of unedited content lasting the entire video and ending near the end. This video is piss poor and even YouTube thought it wasn't. Splices can look like a lot of editing, but seriously, it's not much. You clearly watched it and you can see yourself how little has changed. Who is lying? I swear Harley is so dumb, bro. I must say that I find it to be kind of funny that you say that it wasn't a re-upload, which you're right on, and then directly after that claim that it wasn't transformative. Feels like those two are clashing a little bit there. Over 40% of Akumo's video is my content, and Rule 3 literally correlates with what Nia and I have been saying. I just... How many of y'all even know what fair use is? May I just point out that we are 10 tweets in and only now has Kai actually cited a source? Or more so shows an image of that source as they don't link the source or anything? This image is actually quite important here as it lists the four factors of fair use. The four factors of fair use. One, the purpose and character of the use, including whether or such use is of commercial nature or is for non-profit educational purposes. Courts typically focus on whether the use is transformative, that is, whether it adds new expression or meaning to the original, or whether it merely copies from the original. 2. The nature of the copyrighted work. Using material from primarily factual works is more likely to be fair than using purely fictional works. 3. The amount and substantiality of the portion used in retaliation to the copyrighted work as a whole. Borrowing small bits of material from an original work is more likely to be considered fair use than borrowing large portions. However, even a small taking may weigh against fair use in some situations if it constitutes the heart of the work. 4. The effect of the use upon the potential market for or value of the copyrighted work. Uses that harm the copyright owner's ability to profit from his or her original work by serving as a replacement for demand for that work are less likely to be fair uses. Kai says that Rule 3 correlates to how Akumu's video was over 40% made up of Kai's content. 
And even if we give Kai the benefit of the doubt on that percent there, that isn't actually enough to justify Akumu's video being not fair use. And this is where we get to bring in legal precedent, actually, thanks to the lawsuit that took place between H3H3 and Matthew Haas. As part of that court document for the case made note of the following. No single factor is categorically determinative in this open-ended and context-sensitive inquiry. So in order to make their case here, even if they're right on it, Kai can't do it with this point alone, as fair use cases are in practice a balancing act of sorts between these factors. In fact, the same suit also made note of the following. The third factor is a consideration of the amount of substantiality of the portion of the copyrighted work used in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole. This requires courts to consider not only the quantity of the materials used, but also their quality of importance. The extent of permissible copying varies with the purpose and character of the use. So even if we are very kind to Kai here and say that they could have made their case with Factor 3 alone, they would also need to substantiate how it would not be an appropriate quantity of the content used, something that would be pretty hard to do given how Akumu's video was a response video where they would have needed to show Kai making their arguments to make their retorts accordingly. TLDR, even if we give Kai the benefit of the doubt as much as we can, there is actively legal statute that suggests that this is not enough to make their case. Once again, I'm not sorry. I'm glad Akumu got a strike. Fuck that guy. At this point, I don't even know what people are mad for. About the most unnecessary outrage I've seen recently. Seems just like blind hate and misunderstandings. Hope the show was fun. Funniest thing was this bullshit. Y'all take this dumbass website and yourselves way too seriously. It's wild how upset people get when you don't do what they want you to do. All that bullshit and nothing changed goes to show you, you can't tweet somebody into an apology. Oh my god, you are actively just insulting your opposition at this point. If their outrage is so unjustified, then in your own words, I would love to hear a point that cannot be easily debunked but you haven't given one. You're resting a case you didn't win. Get off of your high horse and consider the possibility that your ego is too hurt to admit that you were wrong and can't accept that you need to hide behind your partner because they have more Twitter followers. I absolutely did rest my case and win. Go retweet a post again to fish for more likes. And they call me insecure. You clapping your chops knowing nothing. That's embarrassing. And go DM her again to complain about me. Lord knows you don't do that enough. Even if we completely ignore you claiming that Harley consistently goes to Omnia to complain about you without giving any evidence to prove that, no, you haven't rested or won this case at all. And I must say, I find it rather rich of you to say that Harley is the one who knew nothing, when even if we give you the fullest benefit of doubt here and say that you filed that copyright strike in completely good faith, that still meant that you went into a copyright dispute without full knowledge of how fair use works, while also pretending to do so afterwards, by the way. And finally... So y'all know why Akumo's video was claimed, and why the strike isn't illegal. He used uncut, long clips of mine, like I slash Omnia said this entire time. If Akumo did a better job at editing, he wouldn't infringe on my copyright like with any other well-edited anime video. And you are the one with the biggest mouth. Your rebuttal literally explains my point. Holy shit, y'all are dumb. What editing of the clips from your video did you really expect Akumu to do? The mere floating of those clips on the gameplay b-roll footage like your content? I don't see how that would change the amount of the clip that was used. Not only that, but remember that Harsh Opinions video I mentioned before? Well, that video actually took issue with Harsh not showing the entirety of Kai's video. Let's talk about these text blocks you put in the video. So you criticized me for cutting context because I didn't put every DM in my video, but you didn't put my full video in your video. With this in mind, perhaps Perhaps Akumu used long unedited clips as you call it, because he did not want to give Kai the wiggle room to make the argument that he was cutting context. Even if it wasn't the case, that wouldn't really stop someone like Kai, who has made some pretty shaky arguments as of what this video has covered so far alone, so I can understand why Akumu would want to preemptively block off a possible claim that could be made against him regardless of how truthful it would be. You can't exactly make the claim that long clips are what stops the video from being a fair use work, when 
when you have actively said that people not including your whole video in their responses was a problem with their videos. Now, there may be something that you noticed about all that. I sorted all of those tweets into chronological order, and you may have noticed that Kai only really made a case for themselves regarding the protection of their copyrighted material later on. They started off by just talking about how awful of a person Akumu has been to them, and while I do agree with that, such doesn't justify using a copyright system on YouTube that anyone who has been on the site for more than a day will hate in order to deal with it. If you feel that you have a case against Akumu for harassment, then a copyright system is not the way to go. Not only for the precedent that doing that sets, but it also wouldn't really do much to stop said harassment. Keep in mind that between Kai actually talking copyright and Kai just talking Akumu, they were also receiving backlash about how two wrongs do not make a right. So Kai began this conversation by talking about Akumu being the cretin he is, and only changed their tune about what the problem was after being called out for how Akumu's actions do not justify their own here. Isn't that convenient? To tell you the truth, I don't particularly buy the idea that Kai had struck this video in order to enforce their copyright, but instead that they had used it as a way to get back at Akumu as Akumu had wronged them. And realistically, if Kai was able to apologize, own up to this being an awful decision, and move on from this, then they might have been in the clear. And what's this? They uploaded an apology video? No, they didn't. I'm not sorry for what I did to Akumu. So you are still going to keep dragging your feet. Fun. Yeah, this video was an absolute mess. As much as it was titled as an apology, it really wasn't anything more than Kai continuing to stick to their awful takes. For the most part, I don't have much to say about the video itself that I haven't said already when discussing their tweets, but there were a few problems that I do have. First of all, would be the roping in of the Toby drama. It's literally the entire thing of the Toby drama all over again. How? How is this like the Toby drama? I really cannot think of a single way that this is comparable in the slightest. I struggle to see why you are bringing in unneeded connotations to a drama that has nothing to do with this one, if not to just generally poison the well here, given how burned out from that drama everyone involved got. Another part that actively annoyed me was this part. This entire outrage is stupid as fuck. All it is is a misinterpretation of my intentions or and a misinterpretation of my tweets and people who don't know anything about law trying to tell me something about law. Here is my challenge to you, Kai. If this entire outrage is as stupid as you seem to deem it to be, then how about you make an argument that doesn't hold the integrity, or lack thereof, that you do? If this entire outrage was just stupid, then how about you make a case for yourself that actually holds up to the slightest bit of scrutiny? This part is actively annoying, because not only does Kai make note that this is a collection of misinterpretations without giving what they view to be the correct interpretations, but if we give Kai the benefit of the doubt and say that they made this strike in good faith, they they still would have made a mistake without understanding the topic of copyright in that scenario. And yet, here they are, getting all high and mighty, insulting the intelligence of their opposition instead of making an actual argument that isn't misinformed at best or just hypocritical at worst. Speaking of, there is a part of this video where Kai points out that there was an example of Akumu using an uncut 4 minute long clip in his video. Akumu did not add a single thing to my video. He did not change anything about it. I could play this clip right here and you would not think that this was Akumu's video. Why? Because it's four minutes of unedited content from my video that you wouldn't know that was his video until the end of the clip where he commentates. Now, this is a true claim, but not only would it not really be enough to prove Kai's case on its own, as you should be looking at Akumu's video as a whole and not just an excerpt from it, but it's actually rather hypocritical. Remember that second Hopeless Peaches video that I told you to keep in mind? Well, Kai had used a rather long and uncut clip there too that was 3 minutes and 47 seconds. And that isn't even the last of my issues. The thing that really bothered me about this collaboration is you and Harley both go on about how little people have spoken on YouTube about about this issue. And if you had simply left it by expressing your want for others to speak out, I would have been fine. But it's the fact that you both felt the need to add your two cents and hardly going as far as to plug your and his socials and channels on his section of the video as if the situation isn't about Thuman and Thuman alone. And then I just ask, where's the outcry? As of writing this, there are three creators of the platform. Studio Canada, Seekalness, Holy TS, Creature Lock, and Virtual Celebrity. Well, that's not saying that. Mine's the one. This is only one thing now that you're doing with all the sign of racism. This is only one of the places to see more rights. I would love to know. He's not okay in anything that's polarizing, but in real nitpicking about the little things most of the time. Well, then back out, well, it's not just going to be a constant, it's not a real person, it haunts by itself. I need to ask, where are your priorities? Because no, this isn't one race that needs to address it, because amazingly, black people are sending these messages. This conversation is universal. We should be having this conversation, so why don't we? Holly?
I have many problems with this. So even if we make a massive leap in logic and assume that this would make Kai's case a success, it would also mean that they are just as guilty in a separate case. Not to mention that you even made note that Akumu added his commentary at the end of the clip. And Akumu's video having commentary is the reason why it is a fair use work here. So once again, it's rather infuriating that you want to sit here on this video and complain at your critics for not understanding law, when your understanding of it seems to be so minuscule that the reason for you being wrong is directly in front of your eyes and you still don't see it. But even so, the part of this that annoys me the most would be the way that Kai tried to say that people are either just backing Akumu for the sake of it or were just looking for a reason to be mad at them. I'm not sorry for what I did to Akumu and I think it's kind of embarrassing that there are so many people that are riding this hard for fucking Akumu of all people and if it's not because it's Akumu then like I guess people are just looking for something to get mad at me about, but what the fuck else is new? Dear Lord, shut up, Desperado. The world isn't out to get you just because you made a mistake and people called you out for it. People are able to dislike Akumu while also disagreeing with you on what you did. At the end of the day, you can still do bad things that victimize bad people. That doesn't make what you did any more justified. That's not how that works. And on that note, you really do need to have some cheek to spend your entire career until this point being largely excused for everything you had done wrong, and then then turn around to say that everyone just hates you for no reason the second they disagree with you on something. And that's about all I have to say about this video. After that, Kai decided to join John Swan to have a debate with him about everything so far. And if anything, it only got worse from here. Now, I will say that I will not be covering the entirety of the debate, as that would take simply way too long, but we will be going over a couple of the highlights from it. A lot of it is just Kai and John yelling at each other, to be honest. So if you want to look into the debate a bit more, you can also watch Jar's video with Spy V about it if you want. But with that said, let's take a look at what happened when Kai's views were more directly challenged. What, did you have like anything to say at all, or are you just like, do yeah, I, I like have to- I have a few talking points that I wanted to go over if you're okay with that. All right, go for it. Um... My first thing is, like, why is Omnia in the thumbnail and description? I already addressed this on Twitter. Omnia made some takes, and her, like, story, like some of her tweets were, like, integral to understanding some parts of the story, so that's why she's in there. But why? That doesn't answer Because I can. Okay, but that still doesn't answer my question. Yeah, it does, because I can. So Kai leads by asking why Omnia was in John Swan's thumbnail. John explains, and Kai's response is to say that it doesn't answer their question when it does. And even if you make the case that they didn't have enough to do with John's point to warrant putting them in the thumbnail like that, something that I can kind of get to a degree, then why would you put Harley and Jar's names in the title of your non-apology? If John's content didn't have enough to do with Omnia, then your video didn't have enough to do with Jar or Harley when you mentioned them a single time, and it was barely even that consequential to what you were talking about. Uploads aside from this one, now that this video from Harley and Jar is out, I'm not going to be uploading at all within this month so people can prove to me throughout that entire time whether or not my strike was false. But back on topic, Kai makes note of how John has no certifiable background in copyright law. You studied law for five years, right? I didn't study law. I've studied copyright law for five years. I'm not a legal expert. I said okay, that so in the beginning you, of the okay, stream. So you studied copyright law for five yeah. years. Did you study copyright law in like the US? No, I, I, I've just done reading. I've done lots and lots so of reading. you haven't studied copyright law in the U.S.? I said, study doesn't mean you have to go to a school to do it. It just means you read up no, about no it in private. You had to go to a school, John. No, no I didn't, I didn't study didn't in the study U.S. No, but all of YouTube copyright... No, I'm, not you have to physically, I'm not saying that you have to physically be in the U.S. Did you okay. study U.S. copyright yes, law? Yes, yes. All of YouTube okay, copyright law is U.S. A, do you have a certifiable background? I said to you no. I already said in the beginning of the stream okay, that I'm not a lawyer. Okay, I said okay, to you so no already. So you mean to tell me... So you 
you mean to tell me, John, that you have absolutely no certifiable background or anything that could even make you a verified source of information to go to about this and you're weighing in on this situation? Yeah, just like you strike the guy okay, without so knowing I, anything I about law. Question. I have another question. I have another question. Okay, so what is illegal about what I did? I never said what you did was illegal. I actually clarified it wasn't multiple times no, in the stream. You actually watched. Twitter, you said that I had. I made. I clarified that. that this is why you watched the fucking illegal. stream. I clarified You're all of it on stream. stream bro. Like, if why not? There's no need. Like, why do you feel the need to sit here and clarify all of this on stream? Why were you unable to do that on Twitter? Because I fucking hate typing. I fucking was, hate typing. I don't think That's that why. What Kai did was illegal. So was what I did illegal or not? Did I abuse the copyright system or not? John? I believe you did abuse it. Doesn't make it illegal. Okay, it has, to, it has to go is to court. John? John, is that objective? No, of course it's not. It's my opinion. Everyone okay, gives their opinion on the situation. Go, so why are you talking about this? So you because I believe that you've abused the copyright I, system. Okay, that's why. So you cannot say that what I did was objectively illegal and all you are doing I never is said arguing that. an opinion. I never said that. I never said it was okay, objectively illegal. We're not saying it was objectively illegal. illegal. Okay, We're not going to say that. Answer it. Is what I did objectively illegal? I already told you. It can't be illegal unless it goes to court. Okay, I so said that in this stream. I, I, so I've said this all. I've said this okay, all so on John, stream. You can, John, you cannot prove that what I did was illegal at all. I can't prove it because that's going to court. Okay, then, bro, what are you? Then why are you talking? So because I believe that you abused the copyright like, system. That's what I said. No, look. So, so John, you were live for an entire hour. Yeah. And all you did was tell people why you think what I did was illegal. Kai, you were yeah. Why you think what yeah. I did was illegal. Yeah. And it's objectively illegal because you can't prove that and you don't no, have No, I said that I that. can't prove it. It's illegal. Yeah. I, and I rest my case. Oh, what do you mean you rest your case? Hilarious. And while that is the case, Kai had also admitted at the start of the call with John that they hadn't watched any of John's stream. Hello, hello. I cannot hear you that well. Hold you on. can? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Let me turn. Look, can I just turn you up? <laughs> you can right click me and like. On my volume. No, I got you. I got you. Yeah. Can you hear yourself through my mic? Nah, you're good. All right, cool. So, how, what do you think of the stream so far? How's it going, man? How? how, how? War stream? I didn't watch a single second. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. That's probably not a good thing. So by their own admission, they did not have the needed information to decide whether or not that would actually be relevant to what John was saying. For all Kai could have known, they weren't making any point that required them to need a certifiable background. All that John required was to make a valid point, and as far as I'm concerned, you haven't proved that his points were invalid. And to put it simply, I can't really see how this is anything other than an attempt to discredit John so that people wouldn't want to listen to his side of the debate as much. You are making an attempt on the credibility of John as a person instead of the arguments that he held. Something that makes it exceedingly more frustrating when you talk about how you rest your case when you haven't rested anything here. You haven't made an actually sound argument even now. But the part that gets me the most about all of this though would be the way that Kai tries to make everything about this conversation sound subjective. So I'm criticizing the people uh, that are wrong. To you. To you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to you. They're correct to you. Yeah, exactly. So I'm, I'm criticizing the people that I believe should be criticized. Okay, so, Why would so I talk about I mean, the people that are right? I mean, what? Hold on. Relax. <laughs> Stop quacking, bro. Like, um, tell me what makes these people right. Because I believe, that they're, I believe that they're right. correct. Uh, it would help if okay, you, like, so watch the rest of the video. Okay, it would help if you watch the stream, because I, I go to I'm all of this in the stream. Stop quacking, bro. Relax. Like I said, okay, so you believe that they're right. So... It's a matter of opinion. Yeah. You think that they're right. Yeah. Okay. So you're arguing. So what makes what makes these? I don't get it. So you think that they're right, right personally. So Kai says that's subjective. John just says, yeah, lol, because it being a subjective view doesn't really mean much here. And Kai basically just folds. To the point where they start asking the same question over and over again. Kai, pointing out that John was taking a subjective stance, the same way that you have been doing this entire time, by the way, doesn't matter the third time any more than it did the first. Which is still not at all, because someone can still argue for their subjective opinion 
opinion with objective talking points, the same way that you can be criticized for failing to do just that. And that's about as much as I feel prudent to cover from John's stream. If you want to watch the stream in full, you can check out the VOD link below. And I would also like to say that yes, Kai did stream about the situation as well, but to be honest, I don't really have all too much to say about it that I haven't said in this chapter anyway. It was at this point that another commentator called Spy V, the best teammate in Overwatch ever by the way, decided to clown on Kai a bit and tell them to be quiet. Akuma bad, I once won debate, copy strike not illegal, not sorry, yada yada, there you go, please complain here. Kai Wiz, shut the fuck up challenge 2021. And what's Kai's response to this very minor and pretty petty tweet from Spy? Well, to inspect element their tweet to show them calling them the n-word when that isn't what they said of course, what else would they do? Is this really how desperate you are to discredit opposition when you will literally edit their tweets in front of us to imply them to be guilty of abhorrent things? Now, this is the extent of the drama that you're probably familiar with. But there was another layer here. As after Kai's more recent return to YouTube that we will talk about a bit more later, Akumu had left a comment on one of their videos, and in response, Kai apologized for their copyright strike. Thanks Akumu, sorry about the copyright stuff again. Super messed up of me to do to you. Well, I disagree with some of this comment, I've just kinda accepted that you just simply maneuver that way. I tried my best to make a solid product, but I don't expect videos like this super often. I'm just trying to take accountability, hold others for their actions, and move on. Otherwise, you're welcome to enjoy and chill with anything else I produce. Well, Kai. I am very impressed. It only took you almost a full year to listen and own up to something that you did blatantly wrong just to get back at someone that you didn't like, but still, better late than never, I suppose, right? Well, not quite. Do any of you guys remember this video I made? If not, then good for you. My videos on Spockta were god-awful and I do not stand by them at all if me taking them down was not good enough of an indication of such. However, part of that video covered Spockta's attempt to cover the events that this chapter did, and Kai decided to leave a comment on that video. The problem that is relevant for this video here is the way that Kai is still spewing that argument about Factor 3 of fair use and how it helps their case. The exact screenshot you had up at 9.0 9 hurts you more than it helps you to. The amount of substantiality of the portion used in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole, which even YouTube had to alert me of, which you left out of the video that Spockter was referencing. That adds to the fact that my work was infringed, but even then, the strike wasn't illegal. And since this entire section seems to be based on arguments stemming from morality or status quo, Spockter was right to say what he said. I didn't make anyone like John Swan either. That's their choice. I think the correct thing to say was, I made it hard for people to hear me out. Kai, this is an argument that has been refuted for almost a year at this point, and even after apologizing to Akumu, you are still trying to justify your actions. So you're either pretending to be sorry for what you did there, or you're just unneededly dragging your feet on a situation that you have supposedly taken accountability for, for no reason. And as far as I'm concerned, neither of those are particularly good. And the reason that I'm bringing this up is because even if you are sorry about your actions here, Kai, which I very much doubt, then it doesn't really absolve you of very much here. Because the biggest problem with your actions during the Akumu drama was the way that you would just consistently drag your feet on them over and over again. And even at a point where you're supposedly sorry for those actions, you're still dragging your feet on them. With that being said, though, we've come to the end of the Akumu situation. And now, it's time that we get to something a little bit more serious. So I'm sure you have noticed the YouTuber called Omnia at points throughout this video going in and out of mention. Well, that would be because Kai was dating Omnia for a while, and that had come to an end in December of 2021, as Omnia had released a Twitter thread detailing allegations of Kai doing some hazardous things, to put it nicely. Now, are these allegations something that I'm going to be speculating about? No, that isn't my business. I don't believe I'm in much of a position to speak on the validity of those allegations, because at least as of scripting this segment in November of 2022, I simply do not think that there is enough concrete evidence publicly available to publicly condemn either side of things. However, I don't need to accept or reject these allegations in question, because we still have examples of Kai doing some pretty dodgy things too, and even if we give them the benefit of the doubt and say that Omnia was lying through their teeth the entire time, that does not make the actions that this chapter will talk about okay. Just because one party is worse, that does not make another party immune to criticism. That's not how this works. And if I may be clear here, 
I do not support Omnia at all. Actions that they have taken in the past towards countless people, including myself, leave me with absolutely no desire to support them. But that does not make what Kai tried pulling in this thread anything close to justifiable. And with that all out of the way, let's do this. The first thing I want to mention is that one of the things that Kai tried to do was say that Omnia was throwing away their black allyship. I am currently at home surrounded by family, attempting to heal while Omnia still tries to get me jailed for bogus offenses. All of that black allyship is out the window when you take advantage of your privilege. I loved her too, and I never thought she would ever do this to me. Why are you making this conversation about race of all things? It has nothing to do with anything here, and given how Omnia 2 is a person of colour, I don't know what you mean by saying that they are throwing away their black allyship here. The only allyship that was being thrown away here was their allyship with you. And it's also kinda comical for you to mention how Omnia is throwing away black allyship now, when you had said during the Toby drama that Omnia was black themselves. I really don't want to get into the topic of the race comments because that's a whole other can of worms that really didn't need to be fucking open. Okay, first off, yikes. Second, you're right, Toby isn't a mind reader, but neither is Omnia. Also, notice how both of us are speaking on their behalves right now? Just wanted to point that out. Omnia may have consented to the conversation, but she could not have expected Toby to go on a rant about racism versus racial insensitivity. Also a can of worms that didn't need to be fucking opened? You're a white woman, who are you to say that? That can of worms is open for me and Omnia both every day of our lives as black people. If that BLM in your Twitter name meant anything, you would know how foolish it is to say this. And not only that, but you also did so again during that second Hopeless Peaches video. Anyways, my issue with you is your comments about race, which seems to be a consistent pattern with you and several other creators on this platform, including Peaches. And before I get into anything, I've seen several comments regarding the race card when it comes to Omnia and I's criticisms. If it's a problem to you that black people like me and Omnia speak out against things like racism or ignorant statements regarding race and simply reducing our lived experiences as black folks to pulling the race card, you are racist. So you're ultimately trying to make the conversation about race by prescribing racial undertones that aren't there. But we'll talk about how much you and Omnia were black when you could use that to imply that harsh opinions was racist or that Peaches was racist. So Omnia is a person of colour when it benefits you, and yet has no allyship with people of colour when that benefits you. To add on to what you were talking about, in that clip from the Hopeless Peaches video. This is the reason that people say that you pull the race card, Kai. You end up prescribing racial undertones to a conversation that never was about race. And even if we are nice to you and say that you don't do it as much as your detractors would have you believe, something that I can kind of get to a degree, let's not kid ourselves and say that you never do. Not every instance of you mentioning race is unjustified by any means, but as far as I'm concerned, it is here. Because not only are you prescribing a racial undertone to a conversation that has absolutely absolutely nothing to do with race at all before this point, something that does not add to the conversation in any constructive manner, but you're also doing it in a case where your past actions indicate that this argument is coming from a dishonest place. And apparently, when faced with these allegations from Omnia, what does Kai do? Bring up the Hopeless Peaches and Akumu dramas, of course. I've had to contact the police due to her herself, as well as threats of suicide. This relationship has fundamentally ruined my mental health. Also, the person who told me to strike down Akumo, it was Omnia. Her reason was because no one cares what he says. Also, regarding at Rosie the Rascal, aka Peaches, that evidence that Omnia had of Pinky Chu being your alt, that was all photoshopped. Nia also thought that it would be a fantastic idea to brag about the matter to her friends IRL, thinking that she really got me good. But now I'm to blame for your channel being gone and because you can't get into your Twitter? I'm done with taking the fall for you, Nia. Fuck off. And yes, Omnia was stalking Peaches, otherwise she would never have made this. As if either of those have anything to do with the allegations that this thread was made to respond to. In terms of the Akumu drama, you provide no evidence for this claim, and is something so comparably petty that it has absolutely no place in a statement about alleged assault made at home. It's just diluting the conversation with claims that, even if completely correct, do not interact with what this thread was meant to respond to. And even still, your description you give of the situation does not really make note of much beyond Omnia giving you bad advice that you had no obligation to listen to. Whether Omnia thought it was the right move or not, it was ultimately the call of you and you alone to make. So take some responsibility for once. Or at the very least, don't just eject said responsibility 
ability the minute it is most convenient for you. And in terms of the Hopeless Peaches claims, even if Omnia had faked evidence regarding Peaches and was stalking Peaches, something that I am honestly inclined to believe... Yeah, they used the wrong word. You're not by definition stalking, and they should change it to monitoring. Dot, 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 dot. But you do have a problem with going through people's stuff and trying to find stuff. Dot, dot. You did this with Peaches and intently caught her out, but ended up being wrong. Let me ask you. If someone repeatedly lies about you, or vague tweets about you, would you or would you not be sus of their future actions or tweets? That's how I felt with Peaches, who did that very frequently. It's not surprising for me to suspect she will do it again in the future. That doesn't change the fact that you would drag your feet on everything consistently. Omnia's inactions in no way excuse your own. Stop trying to shift the eyes of the conversation onto Omnia for things that have nothing to do with the topic at hand. It amounts to nothing more than a character attack. And if anything, it suggests that you were lying by omission by saying that neither you or Omnia had anything to apologize for regarding the Peaches drama. My point here is that you you can poison the well about how much Omnia is an awful person all you want. That's something that I am more than happy to agree with you on for reasons that are nothing short of obvious to say the least at this point. However, that doesn't actually help your case here. If you had criticism of Omnia for more miscellaneous reasons, you are more than welcome to give them. However, throwing them into a thread that is supposed to be a response to claims a lot more serious doesn't make much sense. It just makes it look like you ran out of arguments about the actual discussion here and started throwing out whatever you could, in one case without even proving it. And it's also made especially jarring when these critiques of Omnia are thrown in so haphazardly. I find it rather odd that Kai would be talking about the situation itself, only to break out midway into talking about Akumu out of nowhere, as if there is any sort of correlation here. Bringing these critiques up now, especially without evidence, seems to just be taking shots at Omnia's credibility instead of making an actual point. Given how we are over an hour into all of this, I'm sure that you have been wondering, why do you care so much? Well, if the distastefulness of Kai's actions are long with the continued refusal to take accountability for them wasn't enough, then very well, I suppose I will reveal a little more of my hand as we discuss Kai's actions towards myself. Who do you think you are? I'm the guy your boss brought here to show you how it's done. And if this is how you run your lab, no wonder. You're lucky he hasn't fired your ass. Now, if you don't want that to happen, I suggest you stop whining like a little bitch. Ah yes, the Lin Lin Weiss saga, my absolute favorite anime of all time. As we've established earlier in this video, my criticism of Kai in the past is not something I deny the existence of by any means, and my problems with Kai would eventually come together as I made my first video about them, a video that was basically me trying to do what I'm doing in this video, albeit in a lot more of an incompetent fashion. As I said before, my coverage was significantly more surface level than it should have been, and the audio was disgusting. And I would also release my second video about Kai after I felt that new information needed to be added onto the first video, as again, the first one was meant to be a cohesive history of Kai's actions, even if it didn't really achieve that all too well. But whatever. At the end of the second video, I ended up making note that I was done talking about Kai on the channel unless they ended up responding to me specifically. And at this stage, to take a short break from the memes now, I am simply done with Kai for the time being. I'm getting to the point where I am simply so sick to death of him that I'm not going to make another video on him again unless he ends up making a direct comment towards me or something which I doubt will happen. Something that I doubted would happen because of the small size of my channel. Subscribe, everyone. And despite that, Kai would fire up a live stream where they would watch a bunch of videos about them. And who did they talk about first? Me. While I do not have an archived file of the full stream, as it was privated as soon as it ended, I do have a recording of some of the stream's audio, given how I was watching it with a few friends at the time. And thankfully, one of them was recording speed paint footage. Most of that recording is unfortunately unusable due to the other people in the call talking over the stream, but thankfully, the point in the stream that I had the most problems with was at least somewhat usable, so let's take a look. Yes, that he did have a hand to play in the okay, no one's de denying the fact that I had a hand to play, but that's- No one's denying the fact that I had a hand to play. Yeah, I didn't try to say that you were. I was trying to say that you were downplaying your involvement in it. I didn't try to say that you were, tr that you were trying to say that you had none involved no involvement at all. Now, how about we take a look at my second Kai video and play out that point in full? He also ended up making a thread in regards to Hopeless Peaches, where he shifts the blame away from himself at multiple points when everyone who is aware of the situation knows that he 
did have a hand to play in the Hopeless Peaches drama, and no matter how much he tries to downplay it, he screwed up and he simply needs to own it at this point. Not to mention the projection he shows when he says that people can't admit to doing wrong while playing the victim card and saying that they put it all on him at the same time. My argument was not that Kai ever denied having a hand to play in the Peaches drama, my point was instead that they were downplaying their involvement by shifting blame onto the other parties involved, as if that means that they didn't deserve critique as well. Now, you may think that this was just a hasty slip up on Kai's end, right? Eh, maybe so, this was a live stream after all, so maybe Kai just dropped the ball on this one. However, even if that was the case, that doesn't excuse what they did after seeing the rest of my point. And no matter how much he tries to downplay it, he screwed up and he simply needs to- You're right, this person really does not have a pop filter, you can hear- So to wrap up what happened here, Kai played out half of my argument, paused it midway to argue against a version of my argument that is so simplified that it's not even the same point anymore, and upon seeing the part of my video that showed this, they just riff with chat by ripping into my lack of a pop filter. I'm not gonna pretend that my lack of a pop filter at the time did not merit criticism. It does make the audio of the videos with this problem putrid to say the least. However, that does not excuse you seeing something that disproved something that you had said and not taking accountability for it. If you had just said, whoops, my bad there, this would have been fine. And yet even that was too much to ask? Really? Anyhow, I then made a Twitter thread about the situation thus far. I did just want to say that if Kai thinks that privating their stream is going to stop me from responding to it, they're dreaming. It may have replaced the Luke video at the top of priorities, but still. And if they therefore want to say that I shouldn't be making claims without the clips from the stream, I get that. But at the same time, you put me in a position where I could no longer do so. So don't respond to them at all, ya white bitch, is what I imagine they would say to that. And if that happens, then good job on proving why you were taking your streams down. You want to make the points and then dodge the possibility of people covering them in videos. Also why you hound re-uploads as much as you do, but whatever. And I am not going to let such a scummy attempt of silencing people like me stop me from talking about how you would do everything you could to misinterpret what my second video on you was trying to say further proving you were sticking to your guns on trying to look correct instead of being it. So cheers for showing that you won't change. Because at the end of the day, Kai, I don't care what kind of status you think you're entitled to, but when you try to step to me and do so while manipulating everything about the conversation, you are begging me to do what I wanted to do anyway and put you in the dirt. And you got something else coming if you think that's such a futile effort at halting critique that you are too thin-skinned and egotistical to accept, despite the fact that you deserve it. It's time that we say goodbye to this prince of morons. Because when you need to lie to win against the 16-year-old kid, as you egg on your cringe stands after you sent them after me during the Akuma situation, a prince like you is going to be dethroned from the little soapbox that you must have some sort of kink for to stand on as much as you do. Cheers for reading and have a good day. And a little FYI if Kai wants to respond to that video as well, don't bother until you are willing to take it on the chin and re-upload the stream itself so that people can have the full context that you robbed us of. A thread that was a little impulsive on my end to be honest. I concede that I was assuming intent a bit there. That was my bad. To put it simply, this thread was not great on my end. And yet, how does Kai respond to it? Well... Holy shit, dude. Can you talk about anything other than me? This is legit harassment at this point. Leave me alone. Half of Linlin's account is literally just me. I swear I can't even have a comfortable break and exist in a separate space without you people bothering me. Are you seriously this content deprived? It's such a weird obsession. Why do I need to reinstate this account just to keep you from bothering me on my other platform? Let me have some peace. Stop bothering me and milk someone else for a YouTube channel, please. I'm sorry, but me making a thread to talk about a stream where you were talking about me, without even tagging you in that thread or anything, by the way, is not harassment. And if it is harassment, then may I suggest that you at least keep your morals consistent and apologize for harassing Hopeless Peaches if going off on Twitter about someone does actually count as that. And in terms of half of my account being literally just about Kai, that's just not true. And if you have to resort to extremely vague hyperbole to back up a buzzword in a way that doesn't really amount to much, then you may need to reevaluate your position here. Especially given how you were the one who said that Peaches wasn't allowed to exaggerate someone for the sake of comedy. Peaches actually responded to Avrona in her own comment to break down some of his points, and though it's a decent comment, I do have this to say. Peaches, you can't exaggerate a story about somebody else for comedy, especially if the person you're exaggerating isn't laughing with you. That's where Avrona's problem lies. You also can't call him things like the craziest small YouTuber when the guy is anything but crazy and also doesn't appreciate you calling him that. If you didn't think he's a bad guy, 
then maybe not title your video this? So other people aren't allowed to use hyperbole for comedic purposes, and yet you are in a context where it seems to be just to discredit me. And if you want to fall back on the it was a joke argument, then I have two things to say. First of all, I highly doubt that. And secondly, your comment to Peaches said that she especially couldn't do it if the other person wasn't laughing with her. Does it look like I'm laughing to you? Either way, the rest of the spat was something that I ended up covering in my third video on Kai, and I do have very little interest in going into it more than I need to here. And the reason for that is because I have significantly more interest in going over what happened after that video. The first of those events will be this comment that Kai left on it. This is your third Kai Weiss video and you're asking me to leave you alone? Like, I don't have the right to respond on my stream? That's literally the most attention you got out of me. If you don't want me talking about you, then don't talk about me, lol. And being a minor doesn't really give you the excuse to be annoying and obsessive on the internet. I would completely understand this video if I didn't block you three times just to get you to leave me alone. But this video is genuinely silly. I would also understand if I was releasing three videos on how bad Lin Lin is, but I addressed you in my stream because your content is not worth a formal response. I worry for the people who diss me about not taking criticism but just can't take it themselves. You should put in more effort and not be a nuisance and fact check more often, but I know you won't, so I'd rather we just leave each other alone from this point forward. To this I have a few things to say. First of all, you question if I see you as having the right to respond. When to put it simply, framing my criticism of you as denying your right to respond to criticism misses the point. By and large, the video you commented on here was more about how you can't respond to criticism by using misinformation. Information. Kai had gone into the video with a preconceived narrative that it was poor, as proven by the title of the stream, and decided to misrepresent my arguments to make it appear that I said things that I didn't, because when you have no way to refute someone's actual arguments, you simply refute what you claim their arguments to follow the same trend that you have been on since the Toby drama about making yourself look right instead of being right. After Kai privated their stream, I made a Twitter thread about how doing so was not going to stop me from giving them criticism on a video, because I don't appreciate you finally taking a step in the right direction by listening to criticism for a change, and then taking 15 steps backwards by misrepresenting the arguments brought to you so that you can look correct to those who aren't listening to my side of things. You use me as a way to dismiss critique instead of listening to it, when funnily enough, not listening to critique is one of the biggest points that people have against you, Kai. And to hit the point harder again, once more for for the team, I don't like people lying about me to get away scot-free from criticism that they fully deserve. Because I have the ample right to respond when you are going on stream and lying about what my arguments are to make you look better. I'm simply going to speak up whenever people are misconstruing me for the sake of making themselves look good, whether they're Kai or not. If you want to respond to criticism, go for it. Just don't lie in the process. Secondly, don't turn around and say that I shouldn't talk about you without expecting to be talked about back, when the entire spat on Twitter started because you didn't abide by the same principle, while making a rather bad faith claim in the process, might I add. Thirdly, you bring up how this was my third video on you, without elaborating on why that's even a problem, especially given how you have previously had multiple cases where you talked about the same person in multiple videos. Toby with four videos if you count the ones you made with Omnia, Just a Robot with two videos, Sen with two videos, Peaches with two videos, Akumu with two videos, and Creepshow Art with two videos. So if you want to make the case that making multiple videos concerning the same person is a problem now, then first of all, no it isn't, stop grasping at straws, and second of all, even if it is, you have done it significantly more than I have. Fourthly, if you've noted everything that we've been going over in this video so far, you will see why Kai is the exact last person to mock anyone for not taking criticism. And finally, you mention at the end there that you would rather we just went our separate ways. And you know what? Cool, I agree, I would be down for that. Even if we ignore the fact that you are here trying to slip away without taking accountability for anything you did wrong again, an outcome that I anticipated when I was making the video regardless, then I would be more than happy to allow you to run in your circles while I run in mine. Or at least I would be if you stuck to your word on that. As sometime after this, there would be another instance of Kai speaking about me in another live stream. Let's take a look. I remember something, something I wish to change about the commentary communities. People stop listening to these 16 year olds, they are not mature enough to behave in drama. Oh my god. Uh. If, if I had a nickel for every time I had to deal with Lin Lin TBS and the Neotology cult, bro, oh my god. I'm sure that they're watching the stream right now because they're addicted to everything that I produce, but, like, they cannot, like, it's just too much. And honestly, like, I'm only gonna say this in my stream, I'm like three, like, not 300%, I'm like 80% sure that Lin Lin TBS is just a Harley alt, because I was in a call with Harley TBS not too long ago, and, like, 
Harley had like this voice filter and he was like joking around about like how much he sounded like Linlin. And I'm like, because you probably are Linlin. And I just think it's really weird that this that this YouTube channel with like 300 subs is able to like get collaborations and interviews with Hopeless Beaches and fucking Harley TBS. I just think that's kind of weird. And I don't know, something something odd is going on in the back end of that. And their weird obsession with me in specific is super strange. And I don't know, it's just it just gives me Harley vibes. But that's just that's just me like throwing bullshit out there. I could obviously be wrong about this, but I don't know. I just feel like Linlin TBS is like a uh, Harley alt with a voice filter. <laughs> Who knows, man? Linlin gives me such bad vibes. Yeah, oh God. I know that they're probably gonna go on the stream and see me say this and be like, oh my gosh, Kai Weiss is lying about me, you parasite. It's like, it's just embarrassing. It's very fucking embarrassing. I don't know what it is with them like being addicted to conflict with me, but it's really gross. I don't like them, I don't like their friends. It's just really weird. As you can imagine, I have a few things to say here. First of all, even if you are not entirely sure, how are you even 80% sure that me and Harley are the same person? Contrary to popular belief, we don't even really sound anything alike. With the exception of both of us being British and needing a bottle of water, I don't see how we sound anything alike to be honest with you. And bringing up how my prison mate Luke video had an interview with Peaches in it doesn't actually add to that. Cause wanna know how that happened? I asked her big shock, so this point doesn't really mean much. Also, I must say that you talking about how obsessed I am with you, and how addicted to conflict I am with you, didn't work the last time you tried, and it doesn't work now. To put it bluntly, I don't particularly enjoy arguing with you, because it consistently just ends up being a case where you just argue everyone in circles until we get fed up with you. And if you think that snide remarks about my character would be where this ended, then I must say that I wish that was the reality. Returning to my feud with Spockta for a second here, stay with me, Spockta would have have a call with Peaches, where he acted like an utter scumbag to put it politely. And soon after that, he tweeted that he was logging off only for Peaches to make note that she still wasn't happy with his actions here. And quite rightly so, as far as I'm concerned. Why is this important though? Well, that would be because Kai decided to throw their hat into the ring and talk about the situation. And when I gave some pushback, they seemed to make some pretty questionable moves. IDK, why the same person that left YouTube in the middle of getting backlash is somehow telling someone else that they shouldn't come back BC, they were a little less than savory to her in a Discord call. Please grow up. Hi, the reason that Peaches is allowed to tell Spockta not to come back is because the backlash that Spockta was getting was justified. Not the backlash from me, as I have already made my stance on my Spockta videos very clear, but the backlash that Spockta got from people like Heat and Mitsuru was significantly more warranted than the backlash that Peaches was getting from the likes of you, Prismate Luke, etc. TLDR, stop simplifying things here so that you can use Peaches taking a break for her mental health as a call to hypocrisy. And given how little about the situation between Peaches and Spockta was public knowledge at the time, as the call you were referring to was not publicly available when this tweet was made, you should have known to not make this remark because of how you have that gap in knowledge that stops you from even knowing whether or not this is an apt comparison. I don't have a lot of pull in this community, obviously, but I'll say it if no one else will. Y'all need to stop letting this person run y'all and your platforms. They are not faultless. If y'all can hold Naya accountable, you can do the same to Peaches. Stand up, LMFAO. If you can hold Omnia accountable, you can do the same with Peaches. Hold her accountable for what, though? What has Peaches done wrong that she hasn't been held accountable for? To be honest, Peaches was by no means perfect, and she did deserve a degree of criticism. However, as of scripting this segment in October 2022, there isn't anything to my knowledge that Peaches should take accountability for that she hasn't, which is more than I can say for you. You telling people to grow up is like me, a British kid, telling people to stop drinking tea. You telling me anything is ironic considering your blunder trying to call Spockter out yourself. You just make things up and treat them as a fact. Wild it took a video on you for people to realize that. I hope you find peace BC your weird obsession W me is above me. So me making mistakes during the Spockter situation, mistakes that I have already publicly corrected by the way, means that me criticizing you for completely separate things that you haven't taken accountability for is quote unquote funny. Yeah, sure. If you are scraping at the bottom of the barrel this hard to find a comeback after I just called you a hypocrite, then unfortunately I must inform you that you are a wee bit cringe. Don't we just love the two core queef fallacy, everyone? And I must outline two things here. Firstly, this weird obsession I have with you will not suddenly exist if you keep pretending it exists to discredit opposition. Especially given how if arguing with someone and tweeting about someone constitutes as obsession, then you can hop off this obsession that you've had with peaches over the past couple years. Years. And secondly, if my so-called obsession with you is really above you, then how about you make an argument that actually responds to what I said instead of doing this? Because as things stands, this just really feels like one of those I care so little that I have to tell you how little I care arguments. Your weird obsession with me is above me. 
And yet here you are, poisoning the well by weaponizing a mistake I have gone out of my way to correct. With someone who keeps doing the shit you do with the level of chronic justification that you have, you are in no way above any one child. Weaponizing a mistake I've gone out of my way to correct. Lumfow, pot meat kettle. They always hate it when it happens to them, but have no issue doing it to others. Which of your blunders that you have gone out of your way to correct have I weaponized? Your hypocrisy? Because that's the only mistake of yours that I had called out in the first of my tweets in this spat, and as far as I'm concerned, no, you haven't gone out of your way to correct it. What do you mean? And in my second tweet, perhaps you could be referring to the chronic justification I call you out on. But even then, that's not a mistake that you've gone out of your way to correct either. What do you mean? Wrong again. You are bringing up said mistake in a conversation that has nothing to do with it and does nothing but poison the well. And you calling out hypocrisy is so fucking funny. Cheers for playing. Try again when you can make an actual argument. So, again, pot meat kettle. Someone does the same thing you do in your content and Twitter profile and for some odd reason you're mad about it? Lol. The self-loathing slash deflection is so strong here. Have a good day, Lynn. At least you had an epiphany once. Can I just say that I find it really funny that I say that you were bringing up my previous mistakes in a conversation that has nothing to do with them, and you respond with saying that you did the same thing that I did on my channel and Twitter profile. When not only are those citations so vague that they don't even serve the purpose of a citation anymore, but did you literally just admit that you were poisoning the well with an irrelevant talking point for the conversation at hand? And to add on to that, given how you just admitted to using the Tuchel Kui fallacy, it's then made deliciously hypocritical for you to accuse me of deflection. Citation needed, comrade. Because to put it simply, I don't do that. You have been constantly pulling shit out your ass for ages now, and everyone else being fed up with that is exactly why no one listens to you anymore. Your word carries the weight of a feather. The citation is the mistake you just literally considered lemafow. Please stop projecting your actions onto me. I don't have three Lin Lin videos on my channel. I'm trying to end this conversation. Give it a rest, kid. If ending the conversation is all you want, then you don't need to have the last word in it. The thing I was looking for a citation on was you claiming that I was a hypocrite for taking issue with you using a mistake I have already corrected. And to put it simply, the mistakes I have made in my Spockta videos do not really work as a citation for that. While I did do a lot of bad shit in those videos, I don't deny that, using mistakes against people that they have already corrected wasn't one of them. And even if we say for the sake of the argument that it was, the fact that I have retracted those videos would show that I do not stand by those actions anymore. You can't use an action as a call to hypocrisy now when I no longer stand by that action. That's not how hypocrisy works. And once again, me making three videos about you previously has nothing to do with this conversation. Try again. Or don't, given how in the February thread about Peaches, you may remember that you tried to devalue your involvement with the Peaches drama by pointing out that you only made two videos about Peaches. So according to Kai Weiss, making two videos about someone is perfect fine. But only making one more is so morally abhorrent that it warrants bringing it up in a completely unrelated conversation. Fun. Firstly, stop making it look like the mistake I made in that one instance, the Spockta one, is something that I still stand behind when I have already clarified that I don't. I don't have three Lin Lin videos on my channel, and the relevance to the conversation that this has is what? And given how this entire thing span off of a conversation about peaches, you telling anyone to drop a grudge is some spicy hypocrisy. You formed a grudge with her because admitting you were wrong was too hard, and almost two years later you are still up her ass. And given how ending the conversation conversation is all you seem to be able to do after flopping on your face this hard, I'm down. I have frankly made my point at this stage, and waiting for you to take criticism is like waiting for the flying car. Checkmate. For like the seventh time now, lol. IDK how you can be so blissfully wrong in almost everything you say. It's truly a talent of yours. I don't care about the Peaches drama. I'm saying don't try to grandstand on things you yourself are guilty of. <laughs> <laughs> if Peaches could weigh in on the Spotter drama with crap about her drama, even if I wanted to bring up the Peaches drama mess that pertained to me, I wouldn't be wrong in doing it, smiley face. If Peaches can, I can too. Sorry you have trouble admitting that. So you respond to me calling you out for holding a grudge with Peaches by saying that you were able to talk about the Peaches drama here if you really wanted to. Okay, but that has nothing to do with your grudge. Even if we accept your premise that you can bring up the Peaches drama here because she did it herself, while completely ignoring the context you were doing so in, by the way, that doesn't interact in any way with me pointing out how you have seemingly held a grudge over that for way longer than is reasonable given how far you were in the wrong. 
And if you think that I said otherwise, then I'm sorry that you have trouble reading. Coming from the person who somehow thought I told them to drop a grudge, and self soothes by saying checkmate, I wish you so well in your future. BC8 will be difficult with habits like that. Good luck. Oh, I'm sorry, Kai. I inferred that you were telling me to drop a grudge because if you weren't, then you alluding to the amount of videos I've made on you in the past would be nothing short of an ad hominem attack that has nothing to do with the conversation otherwise. And me saying checkmate is not self-soothing. It's a meme that refers to how this conversation wasn't really gonna go anywhere else productive beyond this point. And even if we accept your premise and say for the sake of the argument that it is me self-soothing, that's a lot coming from you given how you would rest the case you never won in the Akumu situation. TLDR, even if we actively let your excessively uncharitable interpretation through for no reason, it would still be hypocritical of you. And with that, I checked out of the conversation because I frankly had better things to do than argue with someone who seemed to be overflowing with bad argumentation that doesn't relate to the topic at hand. However, that doesn't mean that we're quite done here. We still have one last home stretch. So let's end this, people. And for this final chapter, I wanted to talk about a video that is no longer up, but had considered talking about it for a while, given how it seems to have quite a few problems. A video titled, We Need to Talk About Thumin. I will disclose that Thumin has helped me out in the past, and Thumongus is the single best thing that I have ever created. However, that does not change the fact that parts of this video are things that I am surprised to see less people take issue with, to be honest. For starters, there is a point where Kai covers Thumin calling them out for bringing up things that are not relevant to the very serious claims brought against them. Like the audacity of this man is staggering. Why is skin tone or years old online drama the thing you constantly latch onto when you're being cancelled because you physically hurt your partner? How does a copyright drama correlate to the current accusations against you? Stop deflecting. Hi, it's editing Kai. I'm editing this video right now, duh. But one thing that really bothers me about them in saying this is how are you going to say, hey, you did this thing, you hit your partner, you beat your partner, and then directly the next line after that say this is an accusation what does this have to do with the accusations against you if you're gonna keep the energy that this isn't an accusation then just just keep that like why are we suddenly flip-flopping on what this is like i, I got so annoyed reading that and i just want to point it out in case people miss it so yeah oh my lord i'm addressing skin tone since omnia lied about black fishing as if that wasn't a conversation we had often when it came to omnia darkening their skin and editing their photos to make themselves and their body look darker and more curvy but i don't blame anyone for not knowing this considering no one online on youtube has lived with omnia nor met them or even knows them as well as I do, or sees how dishonest they are on a daily basis. Unless they are their family, and I would argue I know Omnia better than they do too. But Thuman is right about one thing. What does copyright drama have to do with the domestic violence accusation? But that's fine too, because I'll address it in due time. Even if we ignore how that editor's note seems to be little more than word salad, along with how you make the claim that Omnia edits photos to make themselves look darker without supplying any evidence to that effect, I just love how Kai had brought random factoids about unrelated drama to the conversation surrounding Omnia. And when Thuman calls them out on how those things have nothing to do with the conversation at hand, Kai has the nerve to act like Thuman is the one deflecting with unrelated information. What does copyright drama have to do with this accusation? Honey, you tell me! You were the one who brought it up in the first place, and Thuman mentioning how that is deflecting from the topic at hand doesn't mean that she is the one bringing up irrelevant stuff as your tone here insinuates. You're throwing out a no you when the basis for that no you you isn't even basis for anything beyond you desperately grasping at straws. Like, how does YouTube drama have anything to do with why you beat the shit out of your partner? Did the Toby drama make you do that? The fact you're trying to tarnish reputations of those who once supported you by misrepresenting situations to suit your narrative is creepy as fuck. How can I tarnish your reputation when you were the one who chose to say what you said and do what you did? I didn't make you say what you said on Omnia's script about Peaches. I didn't tell you to start clowning in Jar's comment section behind the scenes. I didn't tell you to grab screenshots from the private server Peaches was in. I didn't tell you to hop on an alt while Peaches was private. But I'm glad we can agree on something. My dramas have absolutely nothing to do with this, but the general YouTube audience surely acted like they did. One thing that really bugs me is the part where you talk about the screenshot from this vent server. The screenshot you show is of a tweet that you made talking about how it was Thuman getting that image. Because I suppose that citing a statement statement that you had previously made is proof of what the statement said. While I certainly do not deny the possibility for Thuman to do these things, it's odd that the screen
screenshot you show on screen where you should be backing up what you say is just you showing that you have made the point before, and that you didn't really have any concrete evidence there either. Something that is made even worse when you talk about how Thuman was allegedly going on an alt to monitor Peaches when her Twitter account was private. Because even with how little you substantiated the point before this one, at least you could have been bothered to try and prove your claim with some evidence, which is more than I can say here. Stop trying to drag me down with you, you weirdo, and simply leave me alone. I want nothing to do with you. I will continue to support my friend privately as I have been. Other than that, I wish to be left out of this mess. This is obsessive behavior for real. I wish to be left out of this mess, Thuman says, as she complains about an account three times smaller than her calling her out for some bullshit she chose to do. You put more eyes on your own actions than I ever could. You will continue to support your friend privately as you have been? Cool, then don't ever say at any point we were friends or you supported me at all. You don't apologize for anything because you're actually sorry. You apologize because you got caught. You had a much larger hand in the Hopeless Peaches drama than you act like you did. How long were you going to let this slip under the radar before you took accountability for it? And oh man, wow, this just hit me. Did you forget about the call that we had with Spockter before his video came out when we ranted about Peaches? Or did that suddenly slip your mind? Or maybe you forgot about also looking over Luke's script and unlisted videos in regards to Peaches in our group chat on Discord with Shannon, Junkie, Phantom, and Dulu. The only weirdo is you. I'm not gonna be your scapegoat. You wouldn't have to worry about people bringing up some shit you did if you didn't do it in the first place. If you take what happened to me as taking accountability, then the shoe fits for you too. Okay. Okay, even if we completely ignore the hypocrisy in you saying that Thuman had a bigger hand to play in the Peaches drama than she lets on, and the hypocrisy in you implying that the size of your account and Thuman's account have anything to do with whether this is obsessive behaviour or not, given how I am significantly smaller than you on Twitter, only for you to pull that tactic on me multiple times, you claim that Thuman checked over Luke's script without anything to prove that, and also claim that you talked about Peaches in the call with Spockter when the closest thing to proving that claim is by making note that the call happened happened in the first place. Something that is made kinda icky given how the video actually doesn't show any parts of the call where you ranted about peaches. Why does nobody pronounce my name correctly? It's Kai Weiss. I don't want to call Toby a pedo because I don't think Toby is a pedo. I just, just think that her yeah. generalization of what makes somebody a pedo is way too vague and she falls within that. Me, Thuman, Omnia, none of us at all ever said that Anybody was racist. Yeah, no, never once not. did I call any of these people racist. Yeah, I can't say that she's a performative activist or anything. Her wording was poor. Like, that's yeah. it. I've been a long-time viewer of all of these channels. Hopeless speeches, bad lips, uh, uh, Nani. I know and I respect it, right? I looked up to them. I am so genuinely tired of this situation, <laughs> man. I'm so tired of like, this. Like, Look, man, I don't want to do another response. <laughs> Like, even at this point, bro, like, I don't, I don't have any ill will toward any of these people, just like ZZ. Like, I have no ill will toward ZZ. My point here is that given how the unedited contents of that call are not publicly available at the time of scripting, citing Spockter's video for that call doesn't back up your point as much as you seem to think. Because after you look at all the clips that his video contained of that call, at best there was one instance of Thuman mentioning Peaches in passing when she was talking about a collective of people. TLDR, don't act like there's enough evidence for this in any way, because even if we do the legwork on your behalf and grab the evidence that is your job to show as the presenter here, there really isn't anything that backs up your claim in the way that it was made. For the love of Spongebob, stop making claims without evidence for them. And better yet, don't allude to a video having the evidence that you would need to make your claim work when it just doesn't. However, the part of this that made me the most frustrated was this. I tried helping a friend who felt hurt and betrayed. I regret it all now. I never thought Shannon was planning Peach's downfall on Locale for years, and I just believe the masses. I believe my friends. This doesn't make any sense. Shannon was never planning Peach's downfall on Locale. I don't even know where this comes from. Talking shit, maybe, but whatever real beef they had against Peach's was likely outside of the forum. Regardless, you can't help anyone you consider a friend by spearheading and co-signing their toxicity. And if anything, I'll take a shot at myself. Because this is a moment you did a great job in giving me critique. 
if you really wanted to get a great point on me for anything, you could have brought up how I didn't listen to you when you told me to step away from my platform when I was trolling on my main account after the copyright drama. That was a stupid thing for me to do. But that's fine, I paid the consequences for it. But don't go on talking about Shannon as if you weren't innately aware this video was coming out and greenlit it. Shannon posted it in the group chat on Discord unlisted for all of us to see. You were completely fine with its release until the public began to have issues with it. But complain about love bombing because she made two videos in support of your situation and donated to your Patreon. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I ain't happy. Even if we completely ignore how you went off on a tangent there about how you were trolling in the Akumu drama, when that actively doesn't contribute to the conversation in any way, in combination with how you were making these claims about Thum and supporting Creepshow's videos before they came out without proving that either, the part that frustrates me above all is how you misrepresent Thuman's claim about being love bombed by creep show. Let me give you a quick rundown on how I got to know Shannon because I think this is actually one of the more clear signs of love bombing that I've seen her do. But of course, at the time, I didn't think much of it. I formed a friendship with Creepshow Art last year due to a drama that took the art YouTube community by storm. Before that, I had been a casual viewer of hers for a long time. For you guys who aren't in the art commentary community, I'll try and summarize the infamous Toby drama as quickly as I can. And for the rest of you that are tired of hearing it, I get it, but bear with me. Toby is an art commentary channel that became known for exposing none other than Creepshow Art in a video titled The Faults of Creepshow Art. It was a highly popular video in the art commentary community, and it led to Creepshow Art responding to Toby's video with an apology, addressing everything, and taking accountability. In a huge turn of events, Toby, who had initially exposed Creepshow Art, ended up in a controversy of her own. She was exposed for hypocritical behaviors and other mishaps that were, at the time, on par with what she had accused Creepshow Art of doing. The difference between Toby was that rather than holding herself accountable, she got her friends and acquaintances to defend her. This is when I came into the picture by making a video attempting to hold Toby and other community members accountable for how the situation was mishandled. Hours into releasing my video critiquing Toby, Creepshow Art left a supportive comment on my video, subscribed to my channel, followed me on Instagram and Twitter, retweeted my video, and even became a patron. I'm so overwhelmed with the influx of support pouring from a creator I had been watching for a while. But if I look back, it all makes sense. Of course, Creepshow would support a video critiquing the person she had beef with. I just didn't think that deeply into it at the time. I was just shocked that someone I had been watching for so long suddenly followed me on every social media and even signed up to financially support me. Mind you, this all happened in the same night I posted my video. I consider this as a form of love bombing, but let me know what y'all think in the comments because I could be wrong. The simplest definition of love bombing is the action or practice of lavishing someone with attention or affection, especially in order to influence or manipulate them. It's often used to win over your trust and affection so that they can meet a goal of theirs. And honestly, I think it worked because I was swayed to trust Shannon more due to her overwhelming outpour of support. I just assumed she was the nicest person ever, supporting a smaller channel out of the goodness of her heart. But that sounds almost comical with everything that we know today. Throughout the end of 2020 to spring of 2021, we kept in touch. At the time, I was dealing with a racist hate mob that had been harassing me for a prolonged period of time. I was venting to crystal art about my situation, and she actually encouraged me to shed light on it on my channel, which I ended up doing even though it was such a hard video for me to make. She then made a video of her own, shedding more light on my situation, which sent an influx of her subscribers over to my channel to show even more support. To this day, I'm thankful that she did that for me. Her allyship made me respect her even more, and the fact that she used her large platform to give attention to something so important made the biggest difference for me. Thanks to her help, my DMs were filled with supportive comments instead of racist filth, and it honestly made me feel less alone. I have two videos on my channel talking about what I had to deal with, and I actually shouted Shannon out in one of them to express my gratitude. You can then imagine my shock and disappointment when I heard that she was behind a harassment campaign against a fellow YouTuber for multiple years. This crushed me because I know how horrible and shitty it feels like to be harassed. So hearing Emily's story was really shocking to me. I was also appalled to find out that Shannon had been homophobic, transphobic, and generally gross in the anonymous forum, going as far as doxing her own sibling in the process of shitting on almost everyone she knew. This behavior was so far from what she had showed me that it was honestly hard to believe that this was the same person that was there for me when I had it rough. All this put a seed of doubt in me that perhaps the only reason she made her videos defending me was to get brownie points or good PR. What if she did it to appear as an ally to seem like a good person, while at the same time being completely the opposite on these anonymous forums? Did she really use my horrible situation for her own benefit, or did she help me because she actually cared? These are questions I'll probably never get an answer to, and honestly, I don't know what to believe. In that clip, you will see that Thuman never referred to the videos that Shannon made in support of her as love bombing. She was instead pointing out how, with the benefit of hindsight, she didn't know anymore whether Shannon actually cared or just wanted to look good to the public. For someone who tried calling me out for making things up and passing them off as fact, I find it kinda scummy for you to not only refrain from holding yourself to the same standard, but also end up doing so regarding a statement that would naturally be a rather sensitive thing. To conclude my thoughts on this video, it really baffles me how people just bought into what this video was saying given how it showed not only that you were willing to throw claims around without actually proving them, project what you were doing wrong onto a critic for calling you out for doing that thing wrong and misrepresent a critic of you to discredit them, for like the 10 millionth time now, but that you were also willing to shoehorn in a way to hold a very vulnerable moment against that critic while acting like it was relevant to the conversation when it really wasn't. And with that said, we've finally gone over everything that my hard drive has room for. Time to conclude. After covering all of the situations that this video has, a pattern of behavior becomes clear as day. Pi has been arguing in intellectually dishonest and destructive ways that are nothing short of a problematic precedent to set forth for the rest of the community. Their actions being often excused and overlooked out of fear of what faulty arguments they could make to poison wells or out of fear of being in favor of another party has caused them to be in a position of influence for a long time within the community, so much so that it took some 
some of the most serious allegations that this community has seen in a long time for anyone to change their mind. And whether they were right or wrong for those allegations ends up being irrelevant when it comes to how there were already a myriad of other problems that Kai had been displaying within their method of operation that the community should not have provided such a pass to at any stage. Now, at this point, I highly doubt that Kai will actually watch this video, and even if they do, they will probably have closed it at least an hour ago, blowing me off with dismissive labels that do not contribute to the conversation in any constructive manner, as they have consistently done with me in the past. But on the off chance that Kai has had a change of heart and is willing to hear out my conclusions regarding their behavior, I will conclude this video while also doing so by quoting Kai as much as possible, just to help with the pill that might otherwise be a little hard to swallow. I'm going to keep this short and sweet as I know that you are just going to click into this video and not hear what I have to say, but Kai, you are a hypocrite and it is honestly pitiful and disgusting for you to sit here and condemn other people for the things that they did wrong and won't acknowledge your own faults. This is a pattern and I want to put this in the nicest way possible. Please stop tweeting. Just stop. And again, I would like to put this in the nicest way possible too, running your mouth. You tweet way too much and start disingenuously arguing when you can't handle the pressure that you bring onto yourself. And in terms of your consistent hypocrisy and faulty argumentation, it's the whole thing with the Toby drama all over again. You were wrong then, and you are even more wrong now. You displayed these problems back then and continue to do so to this day, when there is absolutely no good reason to. They actively inhibit a constructive conversation about a given topic and serve to do nothing but make you look better at the cost of everyone else's integrity and or mental well-being in some cases. And the way that you operate has led you to construct a cocoon around yourself where not a single word spoken against you is allowed to be viewed as correct by the community at large, even if it is correct, mind you, to the point where you actively make arguments that don't work to try to defame your adversaries in turn by prescribing traits to them that don't exist. Now, this isn't me in any way trying to say that you are never in the right, as there were instances where you clearly were, in my opinion. But that doesn't excuse the fact that the way you have consistently acted throughout your time as a commentator has been too much of an issue for it to just be swept under the rug and forgotten about. You have caused almost nothing but harm to the community overall and you really ought to have a good think about how you are going to move forward constructively. And while I highly doubt that you will do anything else, as your record of it has been too extensive at this point for me to anticipate otherwise, you trying to clap back at me by throwing out a bunch of arguments that will be disposed of with the easy flick of a pen will not save you. Whereas, the appropriate response to the situation would be to take accountability for once, while actually meaning it, mind you, and to finally end the eternal fight in this judgment hall that you and I have been in for almost the entirety of this year on and off. You just need to realize at this point that you aren't right about everything and trying to make arguments that are constructed to respond to points that no one made, backtrack on intent that you had already made clear when you saw that no one was buying your crap, and to pretend that you weren't guilty of things that you were is not the way to do that. But if you choose to ultimately stick to your guns and actively not change for the better, then you know where I'll be.